hello once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters and I'm glad you could join me. I want to talk about portable operation and mobile operation because the two can be intertwined. Now, I've headed this, the uh, secret hustler antenna, because it's an antenna that has lost popularity over the last few years but not quite sure why, probably because it hasn't been well advertised. Uh, so perhaps uh, this is the time to, um, to sort of uh, address this issue. Hustler are well known for their base station vertical antennas. They've been widely used for many, many years. And they do an excellent range of HF mobile whips as well which are not quite so popular in recent times. And I think the reason is that be the Hustler Whip is designed to have a base section, which is around about a metre or so long. And it's a rigid uh, uh, base connection. And it was very popular when it was possible to mount mobile antennas on the bumpers of cars and what have you. Um, it's based around a 3 8 inch stud mount but the whole antenna is quite long if you're going to mount it on the roof of a, of a vehicle so i think it's the method of mounting and the concept of mounting it um, on a rear bumper um, which has made it less popular than what it was but <laughs> I've used Hustler mobile whips for a long time and I've used them in a different way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put on the screen here a, a, a pretty crude drawing really of the Hustler mobile whip as it was originally designed. And then I'm going to talk about the modification that you can make. So on the screen here now, you can see the basic uh, concept of the Hustler Whip. You've got a lower section, they call it a mast, um, but it, <laughs> I suppose it is a mast in, in some respects. It's, it's around about a metre or a metre and a half long, and the length depends on which choice you make. Then you've got the resonator. Now the res Hustler resonators are excellent. They're really well designed. Um, they've got a higher Q than a lot of resonators. And then above that, you've got the resonator whip. In other words, the part that really brings it to resonance. But let's first of all look at the whip itself. You've got a lower section or the, the, the resonator and a short stubby section and then into that goes the whip. Now, on the line drawing, you'll see that a significant amount of length is devoted to the lower mast section, as they call it. In actual fact, that lower section has very little effect on resonance. Now, I will grant you that it will radiate, but it has very little effect on resonance, such that you can remove it. Now, if you remove that lower section, you've still got a, an antenna that will radiate uh, and I know because I've used that method extensively the only problem you've got is the Hustler lower section has got a female stud attachment or connection so in other words it needs something to screw into it now the way to use the um, Hustler uh, antenna without the lower section is to mount it on something like a mag mount. Now there are a number of mag mounts around. Um, I tend to favour the three-legged mag mount because it gives significant capacity such that you can certainly use it on 40 and you can probably actually use it on, on 80 meters. If you're going to use a single magnetic mount 
then probably you won't be able to reson get, the, get resonance and get proper operation on bands lower than 20 meters. If you want to operate on 20 meters or 17 meters or 15 meters, 12 meters or 10 meters, then you will probably get away with a reasonable sized magnetic mount. That magnetic mount must have um, a stud mount, a stud socket. And this is the problem. You've got a stud, stud socket on your mag mount <laughs> and you've got a stud socket on the Hustler um, resonator. So you need a method of joining it. The way to join it is with a section of what, you, what we call 3 8 inch stud. Basically, it's a short length of 3 8 inch thread that will effectively join together. Now, where do you get a 3 8 inch length of stud from? Well, if you've got a bit of a workshop, you can make it. What you do is you go to the local ironmongers or wherever, and you buy yourself a couple of 3 8 inch bolts and nuts that go on the end. I say a couple because it gives you one to play around with. You only actually need one. So here we are on my bench here. You've got a 3 8 inch bolt and you've got a nut. What you do is you put the 3 8 inch bolt into a vise and you then put a hacksaw in it and you hacksaw the end of that bolt off. Okay, so you've now got your 3 8 inch bit of stud, albeit with a rather jagged end. What I suggest you do is you get a file and you just clean it up. You clean that end up and then you put the nut onto the clean end, in other words the end that hasn't been cut. Put that on there and run it right up the, uh, the bolt, um, put, it, put the bolt in the, in the vise and then start to unscrew that nut um, so that it passes over the jagged end. That nut will tend to clean up any jaggies and you've got then your 3 eighth, three eighth, sorry, 3 eighth inch length of stud all ready to go. So what you now do is you put your 3 8 inch stud, one end of it, into the mag mount and you then screw the female section of the resonator on to the stud. You've now mounted your resonator in the short upper study section. So if I step back here you can see the uh, antenna ready to go. It's uh, just over a metre high and we've got the, uh, the stud, 3 8 inch stud there ready to go into the mag mount. So uh, quite a compact uh, antenna system. This particular one I think I mentioned is uh, resonant on 40 metres. So this is a 40 metre antenna ready to go on the roof of the car or whatever into a uh, as I recommended a mag mount, uh, for 40 metres I recommend a three-way mag mount because it will give you the required capacity um, for the earth connection on the roof of the vehicle. Now I can't show you the finished article mounted on my vehicle because I am still locked down and I haven't got a 3 8 inch mag mount handy. So I'm just going to show you pictorially the finished article. So how does it work? Well, it works extremely well. And right at this introduction, I said it, I said I mentioned portable and mobile. Now, I've done quite a bit of mobile operation over the years, but I tend now to call it portable operation because I will park up somewhere and operate. Now, there's no reason why, if you wanted to be out in the open, you can take your rig out of the vehicle and still use the mag mount on the roof of the car. It's, it's a convenient way of doing it. I put this forward to you as an option because over the years I've worked um, many stations 
using this this system of, of, of uh, portable and mobile operation and um, it is quite a nice and compact system it works well um, the lower section um, if you remove that lower mast section which I, which I mentioned right at the beginning of this video it makes very little difference to the resonance the resonance is really controlled by that upper whip and I've noticed this time and time again on various antennas. If you've got a center loaded antenna, the lower section doesn't contribute that much to the resonance. It does contribute to the radiation, I grant you that. But if you're looking for a compact, simple mobile system, take a look at the Hustler range of whips. Very useful range of antennas, and uh, if you add that 3 8 inch stud which I described it makes them very very useful as uh, base loaded antennas for mobile or for portable work and with the coming of the IC705 which I'll have more to say about very shortly uh, it's an interesting range check them out on our website they're all on our website under Hustler uh, Mobile uh, HF Whips and I think you'll be quite impressed with the uh, with the range and they're not they're not that expensive either there we are thanks for watching this video glad that you could join me hope it's been helpful uh, remember keep safe and uh, in the meantime enjoy your ham radio take care see you soon